Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. Me? Well, I'm having the last day at the house before heading off for another week of travel. I'm going to be away for the entirety of next week and I come back... Mm, come back in about eight days time. So I am very tired right now. You will get to see the amazing stuff that we're going to see very shortly on the channel. But for now, let's talk about today's Sunday musing topic, namely these things, big pickups and how we think it might now be time to have some smaller electric pickups in the marketplace. So when I was on the last big trip that we made, we were driving all the way down to Southern California and back. Uh, we went back up to the bay and then back down again. We took this. Adira Tal, my Ford F-150 Lightning, it behaved impeccably on the trip. Unfortunately, it got its second windscreen chip in the time that I've owned it. The first time we ended up having to have the entire windshield replaced. This time, I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, because the weather is warming up, we won't need to have a windshield replacement, just a patch done. But for most people, this truck is huge and... Both Kate Walden, Elliot and Michael, they both spent a significant amount of time in this truck, as did I, uh, over the last couple of weeks. And we're all of the opinion that for most people, this truck is overkill. However, while we were on the road, we came across some smaller pickup trucks that we were talking about and said, wouldn't it be nice if we had some smaller utilitarian electric pickups? And then, of course, I came back here to Oregon and in my YouTube subscription list there was a lovely video from Simone Yertz talking about her truckler, the electric pickup truck that she made from a Tesla Model 3. And obviously that vehicle has been on the road now for a number of years. It has been driving much longer on the road than a Tesla Cybertruck and it is much smaller than a Tesla Cybertruck and the number of conversations that I and I presume she has had over the years of people going oh I wish there was a Tesla Model 3 sized electric pickup that would suit my needs and the number of conversations I've had with people who say oh I would love a Chevrolet Bolt EV pickup or I would love a Nissan Leaf sized pickup or how about a Volkswagen ID Buzz sized pickup. We're seeing the ID Buzz occupy the space in the electric vehicle marketplace that the Volkswagen Transporter, the, the iconic microbus used to occupy, the Type 2 microbus. And now we're starting to see people talk about the things they might be able to do with the ID Buzz when it comes to uh, the US as a long wheelbase variant. And of course, it's already on sale in parts of Europe. Wouldn't it be great if we had a pickup variant of that? Wouldn't it be great if we had a pickup variant of the ID3 or the ID4? And, you know, talking about some of the most iconic pickup trucks that people remember over the years, they're often the small pickup trucks. Think about the Baja, right? That's a small pickup truck. People think about the Volkswagen Golf pickup truck. That was a very iconic vehicle. Even the, the original Mini pickup, a very iconic practical vehicle for people who didn't need to carry a whole lot of stuff, but didn't have the requirements of a regular car. They wanted a pickup because they wanted to be able to carry stuff without damaging the inside of their vehicle, but they didn't need something this size. Obviously, Ford is talking about a Ranger pickup coming that will be electric or, or something similar. But even a Ranger EV pickup, if we assume that it's going to be the same size as a modern Ranger pickup, is going to be overkill for most people. I'm talking about car-based pickups. I'm talking about pickups that are based on existing production electric vehicles with the rear seats removed and a pickup bed put in its place, like Truckler, like so many of those iconic pickup trucks that I've talked about going back way back when. Of course, there are some advantages to building electric pickup trucks. It allows more sole traders and independent business people to own a pickup truck that is applicable 
for their needs rather than something this big. And granted, we need something this big. We can fill up the whole of the back of this truck with camera gear, the whole front with our, our, our suitcases when we're doing a big road trip. But for many people, you know, if you're a gardener, if you are someone who is a woodworker, if you're someone who is um, maybe has a, a job where you're going to be cleaning windows or doing some other outdoor activity, you may not need a vehicle this big, especially if you're based in Europe. And of course, in Europe, vans are more popular with tradespeople because it rains and it's a secure way of keeping your, your stuff inside a vehicle rather than using a pickup. But over here on the west coast of the US, on the east coast of the US, where people aren't going to be covering massively long distances, they don't need a two, 300 mile battery pack. They may only need a 100 mile battery pack. It does feel like that is a gap in the market. And I would love to know if that is something that you feel needs to be filled. Of course, I can't talk about this topic without mentioning the canoe pickup, which is a very unique design. You know, it's it's that uh, forward control concept where you sit over the front axle rather than behind the front axle, as you see here. I do apologize. I'm being bitten by bugs. It's that time of year again. I'm apparently quite tasty for bugs, uh, but you the canoe design, obviously canoe has not come to market yet, but it's a lot smaller and a lot more compact than say the F-150 Lightning, but it's still quite a big vehicle. Even the Rivian R1T, which is much more compact in its design and makes use of space a lot more effectively in that fantastic rear tailgate that drops down and extends, giving you more space, is more practical for most people than something like this. But even the Rivian R1T is a big pickup truck. And the benefit of going to a smaller electric pickup truck, I would say for a lot of enthusiasts, hobbyists with your surfers or, or whatever you're going to use it for, is that a smaller vehicle requires a smaller battery pack to do the same distance that one of these does on a battery pack that is monstrous. We've just seen the, the Ram 1500 REV specs released. The largest battery pack that comes with that is going to be 200 plus kilowatt hours, which is obscene. We don't really need battery packs that size. Give me a pickup with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. Give me a, a, a pickup with maybe a, a 70 or an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. And for most uses, I think that would be perfect. I would love to know your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below. I think a fly has just landed or a bug or something has just landed on the camera. So I, I'm sorry. It's what happens when you film late in the evening here in the foothills of the coast range. On that note, we are done with today's video. If you have comments, drop us a polite note in the Discord chat room on Mastodon, or if you're a Patreon supporter, in the comments there. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. Another fly has bitten me. You'll also find links to our Kofi Bitcoin and swag store, as well as that aforementioned Mastodon server. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. They are Paul Nelson, Mike Weeder, Denny Hyde, Lunder Irish, Lance Schall, Mark Eggleton, Cyprian Laplace, John Trammell, Alan Tapper, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Sean Tucker, Pedro Mura Pinheiro, Kyle Hudson, Tony Moss, Brophy Wolf, Kyle Fox, Hey Esker, Tazlet in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stefan Flemgen, Stephen Williams, Ray Jean Fellows, Chris Asenta, and Jim Benes. And finally, out of this world, thanks to our top tier supporters. They are John L. Henderson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, John Lyons, Kevin Boroughbridge, Andrew Glenn, Joe Hughes, Dave Kitchen, Joe Bresney, Nigel S., Matthew Drobnak, Eric Knack, Paul Conway, Stephen O'Donoghue, JP Fagerback, Reggie Watts, Marcel Ward, Robert Flannery, Aaron Hahn, Rory Litwin, Ellery Hensley, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget we make videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, or at least try to, on the main channel and then over here at the weekends on Sunday for the Sunday Musing, which is what this is, and our chicken and garden update, which you should totally check out if you haven't already, because I've got a new cover for my greenhouse. Thanks for joining me. Whatever you enjoy next, I hope it's uh, enjoyable to you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, keep evolving. Keep evolving.